So you're asking and wondering about sensation when training a muscle. I'm going to solve the answer to this for you guys once and for all. If there is very low to no sensation in the target muscle, it could be bad or you could be totally fine. Not feeling the target muscle could be a result in piss poor technique or by focusing too much on the length of position and not enough on the short position by limiting your range of motion in the fully shortened range. The shortened position has higher degrees of sensation and focusing considerably more on the length of position will result in higher peripheral fatigue and muscle damage. So do make sure you're using proper technique to actually bias the muscle you're trying to train and actually getting it to the fully shore position without limiting range of motion as well when it is appropriate to do so, so most often. That would be the bad. On the other end of the spectrum, if your technique is perfect for the target muscle you're training and biasing, but you have low to no sensation in it, you should not be worried as our body essentially functions to anatomically have muscles pull bones through planes and articulate joint motion, so the target muscle you're working will contract and thus work as intended regardless. So if you have good technique and you know for a fact you're biasing the muscle you intend on training with it, despite sensation being low, you will get a good stimulus for it regardless if you train close to or to failure. That would be the good. Now, whereas it would be a neurological bonus if you had high degrees of sensation in the target muscle while adhering to proper technique for that tissue, it would not necessarily benefit you any more hypertrophically via more motor unit recruitment. In other words, it would not lead to more gains, so you should not chase sensation either or advocate for it because it may lead to clients or individuals focusing too much on the short position or the squeeze. And over squeezing generally causes more neuro fatigue and may result in instability and weakening in the length and position if it's not focused on enough over time. So high sensation is not an indicator that the target muscle is even being best trained. For one example, we can use toe elevated RDLs, whereas you may feel a greater stretch in the hamstrings, what you're actually feeling is the sciatic nerve stretching, resulting in greater sensation but considerably worse stability and thus worse gains. And lastly, if your technique is perfect for the tissue you're biasing but the sensation you're feeling is in a different muscle, this could just be a genetic component or due to that muscle being pre-fatigued. So again, it's fine, so as long as the muscle you're feeling is not limiting your ability to take the target muscle close to failure. So I hope that helps, and as always, make sure you like and follow for more.